Well, hi, hello, and a really warm welcome on this Sunday afternoon. Now, we are on day 14 of my crazy 30-day go live on Facebook every day video challenge that I set for myself. And um, I'm really excited that we're almost halfway through. I can't quite believe it. And it's every day at four o'clock, it says, <laughs> I've got to go live. Um, and it's been so much fun. And I have so many exciting topics to share with you. So a really warm welcome for those of you who are coming on live. Erica, <laughs> you're amazing. Um, happy afternoon. For those of you that are watching the replay, don't forget to hashtag replay in the comments. And what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about the very thing that could put you off watching this in the first place, and that is tech. We're talking about how confident are you with all this tech as artists, thumbs up. And actually, does it matter? Can we build an art business without it? Or are we totally reliant on it? Hello to Louise as well. Hello, lovely. Hello, hello, lovely ladies. Warm welcome to you. So this, this is quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Because when I started my art career back in the day, we just didn't have all of this tech. There were no mobile phones. There was no social media. We had hours in the day to actually get stuff done. We didn't have all these reasons and excuses um, to uh, procrastinate because there just wasn't all these distractions. But now, of course, what we have is we have just nothing but tech, right? We're completely surrounded by smartphones, iPads, laptops, confusing computers. We've got all sorts of ways and methods to market our art, a large number of which, of course, are online. So those days when I used to um, tramp the streets in the rain with a plastic bag full of envelopes that you know I'd mail merged and printed off at home and we'd manually stuck the address labels on and we actually we actually posted some but we'd walk the streets in order to get people to the exhibitions. We'd put posters up and we'd we laminate things and stick them to the railings and then watch them being torn down the next day and go and put up another lot. Um, you know, we do a lot of networking. We were t completely reliant on getting things in the newspaper, et cetera, et cetera. And now all we can really do is sit at home. We don't actually need to do any movement or exercise at all. We can do the whole thing from home so long as we're good with the tech. So my question to you, for those of you watching or those of you watching later on, how good are you with all this tech? If I say to you, OK, you need to set up a landing page online and you've got to link it to this page and that page. And in front of that, you can put some ads and you can get people to your <laughs> workshops and exhibitions. Ah, how good would you be with that stuff? How comfortable are you with it? Does it horrify you? Do you looking to avoid it? So let me know in the comments. Do you have you grappled it? Do you love the tech? Have you got the hang of it? Do you avoid it? Do you think it's possible to build an art business today in 2020 and not use any tech? Ha ha ha, hmm, medium, Erica says medium, medium. So imagine for a moment if tomorrow um, this big implosion happened and there was no smartphones, no Wi-Fi, no emails, no social media, we'd all go, oh, we can breathe, we can get on with life, right? But there's a big part of us that would also go, oh, OK, this, this is a bit more of a challenge now. So my answer to the question, can you build a successful art business without any of the tech is you could, but it would probably have to be a more geographical local business. And you need to be out and about an awful lot in order to do it. So I still believe it's possible. But I think more and more it's going to become impossible. And I think more and more we're going to have to adapt. So whether you like it or not, you're going to have to adapt with it all. So let's look at what can you do in order to actually improve your um, relationship with the whole tech side and also just this just getting better at doing it all. Because let's face it, it can be pretty quick. It's pretty convenient. It means that you could set things up and then you can go back into the studio again while it's all running. But I know because one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is, I don't know how to do this tech stuff. You know, where can I get help? How can I do it? 
Um, Erica says, always being seen and making connections if no tech. Absolutely, that's exactly. You couldn't be the recluse hiding behind because nobody'd know about you. And one, I suppose, the advantages of grappling with all the tech, and I don't just mean the practical how to use phones and computers, but I mean actually how to do ads online, how to, you know, websites, social media, landing pages, all of that good stuff as well. So we all become a bit reliant on that and it can be time saving, but it's the number one frustration if you just are not that way inclined and you just know, don't know how to do it. So my few suggestions are that actually there's quite a lot of really good uh, low cost courses out there. I don't know about you, but I love platforms like Udemy because for a very few number of dollars, maybe around 10, I seem to find if you get the right timing, you can learn bit by bit how to do a lot of these tech things. Of course, YouTube, fantastic free place if you don't mind kind of trawling through some of the uh, um, less exciting YouTube videos, should we say, and actually you can learn some stuff there. Quite often you'll find that there are local courses, local business centers and so forth will, will offer help. And I think so often people get stuck with this, with this belief, like we were talking about beliefs the other day, belief I can't do it, it's all too difficult, it's all too challenging, um, I don't understand it all. And actually what you need to do is kind of take a breath, step back and look and find yourself some help. Because imagine if every month you set yourself a goal just to learn one new piece. By the end of the year, you'd have 12 new little things that you'd learn and you'd be in a whole different place. So my suggestion to you is twofold. Number one is commit to getting that education. You know, if you don't know how to use spreadsheets, buy a spreadsheet course and say, hey, for the month of March, I'm gonna learn just one little piece. And I'm not suggesting that you learn a whole load, I'm just suggesting you choose one little thing and you learn about it. And then of course, the way I've learned is I just go in there and I just do, and I do, and I do, and I do until I work it out. Um, and so my motto really is just keep practicing. Keep practicing because you usually can't break it. Or if you do break it, then you went, huh, I've broken that. You go back to the beginning and you work out how to do it again. The thing you don't wanna do is be in that position of, of dispowerment and say, I can't do this, it's all too complicated for me, I'm out. What you need to say is, hey, I'm up for the challenge, I'm gonna learn a little piece every month for the rest of this year, and then celebrate where I'm gonna be at um, in a few months time. Agnesha, hello, hello. My son wants to be a YouTuber, he's 10. I mean, that's it, isn't it? That younger generation, they just like, okay, YouTube, I get it, I know how to do it, I know how to do all the tech stuff and they're not put off. Um, and I think if we're lucky enough to have someone in the house who's that age, that's amazing, then quite often you could say, hey, can you give me a hand? <laughs> How do I link this to link this to link this? And I'm always quite amused because my younger daughter, and I'm sure if you're watching Rebecca or you don't mind, she's just not uh, great with the tech, with all of this stuff at all. It's not her bag. She's not really interested in it. And she comes to me for help. And I'm only a few steps ahead. And I'm super lucky, of course, that my elder daughter works in the business. Um, and she's an incredibly fast learner and somehow she's just she's just great at she's like she sees how it all works um, And she's really really good at this stuff So I'd say if you have got someone at home who's maybe in a different generation or it's not even just the generation It's it's that ability and willingness I think to just learn and understand how these things work So I want to just leave you with that idea of please don't allow mindset and your beliefs that your ability to hold you back just know that it's all learnable. What does Marie Folio say? It's all figure outable. And I totally, totally love that saying. And she's built a whole business and life and everything off that. And it's you just got to work it out. Don't be put off by the tech. All right. We're all going to learn it. We've all learned it. And those people that have got ahead have just gone ahead and learned it. So find a way of discovering how to do more of it. Practice find somebody who knows a little bit about it, but just be that person to raise yourself above it and say, hey, I might not naturally be a tech person, but I'm jolly well gonna learn it. I'm gonna learn it bit by bit. So that's really what I wanted to say to you. As I say, I'm not naturally a tech person in any way, shape or form, um, and I've learned 
everything I know today. And I'll leave you with this hilarious picture that you can have in your mind. When I was an adult student um, going into my adult degree course, and I was in the room where we were going to learn Photoshop, and um, they said, if you could just uh, switch on and set yourself up a folder in the blah, blah, blah drive, I wanted to burst into tears because I'd never used a computer. And I was the person looking at the Mac in those days was like that, wasn't it? Big turquoise and silver thing. And I was looking around the computer for the on button. And I just raised my eyes up and I looked at the tutor. And the tutor, unfortunately, made that face of, oh, my God, I've got somebody in the class who's never used a computer, someone who's a bit older than everybody else. And yes, by the end of that one day, I wanted to cry because I just did not understand the language he was speaking whatsoever and eventually the young girl next to me leaned over and pressed the on button and I thought you know what I've achieved one thing I can turn the computer on and many years later damn I'm good at this stuff now alrighty and you can to be so long as you practice all right practice learn make it your mission for 2020 to get better at all the tech stuff that's it. That's all I've got to say for today. Thanks for the laughter and the thumbs up and all of that stuff. Um, and tomorrow, tomorrow we're back to a weekday. Goodness me. Oh, well, if you live in WA, of course, it's yet another holiday. I love living here because we have endless public holidays. So it's not really a Monday. If you're if you're in the work environment, it's a day off. If you build your own and run your own business or you're self-employed, it's just another day. So tomorrow is day 15 of my challenge and I'm talking pricing for profit. Some top tips on how to price your work correctly so that you make a profit from your art and art business. So join me same time, same place tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Remember all the rest of the videos are back on my Facebook page down the left hand side. Go to videos. Yes, just go to videos and there's a playlist in there. And a bit like Netflix, you could do a binge watch this afternoon and maybe have your notebook and pen handy. Take some notes and let me know what you'd like to hear more about. Um, and I'm always happy to do live videos. You'll probably have noticed if you've been on my page at all, I have a 30 minute coming up on Wednesday. We'll be talking about websites that was requested the other day. And I've got a couple more planned as well. So have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.